Hello, Coconut Creek family. My name is John Hartzell, and this is another Creek Talk. Today's special guest is Connie Carberg, who is a Coconut Creek resident, but also the... First female scout in the NFL. That was with the New York Jets in the mid-1970s. Ah, very cool. So I invited Connie in today because today's Thanksgiving, and what do people do after we're done eating our big meal on Thanksgiving? Oh, we all sit on the couch, uh, take out our phones, but we also watch football. It's all about football in the <laughs> afternoon, at least in my family, in my household, it's all about football. So uh, a lot of you may recognize Connie. Connie was on the front cover of Creek Lifestyle Magazine, or Coconut Creek Lifestyle Magazine uh, this past month. And so uh, Connie also recently had a book come out. But before we get into the book, tell us a little bit about how you got into becoming an NFL scout. Well, I never thought that was going to happen. But uh, when I was 12 years old, my father and my uncle became the two team Dr. Nicholas's with the New York Jets. And my life became obsessed with football. And uh, from there, went on to the Ohio State University with Woody Hayes and I became friends with him. He became a mentor to me, went to practices every day, held my own mock drafts. Fortunate enough, um, a little shortened up the story now, I went to work for the New York Jets in 1974 when they built a brand new complex in Hempstead, Long Island and worked there as in the scouting department. Uh, and then in 1975, they had me make the first, uh, uh, first girl to ever make a draft pick. And uh, to this day, there's never been another female act make an actual draft pick. And there were 17 rounds. So now there's only seven. Um, after that, in about 1976, to sorts, uh, the end of it, the Al War, who was general manager, and Mike Holovac, director of player personnel, asked me if I would like to do some scouting. And that's how it began. Wow, very cool. So how long did you scout for the Jets? Uh, close to three years. Three years, wow, very cool. Okay, so during that three-year stretch, you got to know some people. Yes. Let's, this is our time to name drop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for real though. You, you've got a pretty uh, amazing uh, story. Uh, you connected with a lot of folks back then, a lot of big time names. Uh, and during that era, it was an infamous era for the Jets. So who are some of the folks you still keep in contact with to this day? Well, I can go back, first I'll go back a little bit during the 60s when they won the Super Bowl of a lot of people that know those years with the, and growing up with Joe Namath and, and George Sauer and Don Maynard and Matt Snell and Boozer and all those people. They were always over at the house. It's the way that I grew up with the team. And then they won the Super Bowl when I was a high school senior. So, and Joe is a great guy. He really is super. Then after that, um, working with the team, um, those were the years of Wesley Walker and Richard Todd, Marvin Powell, um, Mark Gastineau, Marty Lyons. I can go through the whole Freeman McNeil. They were the great teams that came within one game of the Super Bowl in 1982. So it was a great bunch of guys. I worked, uh, Coach Lou Holtz was a coach. Walt Michaels, also one of my mentors, was a defensive coordinator in the Super Bowl and a head coach with the Jets. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you've got a cool story with Mark Gastineau. You, you had something come up, yep. a situation with the team, and you had to make some phone calls. He got a call from you. He did. I did. Uh, my boss was on the road, and they had a guy get hurt for the senior bowl, and they needed a replacement on the defensive line. So he asked me to go find some players, and most of the guys were already the first-round picks that were in the senior bowl. So I had to find some other guys that might be fifth, sixth, seventh-round picks that were going to replace them. Uh, I, most of them, I remember this was back pre-computer days, everything else. So you had just reports, maybe some film, and uh, they were pretty similar. So I decided to call them all. One guy was faster than the rest, um, but he was from a small school. Called them all. Most of them were, well, do I really have to go? Or when do I have to go? How long is it? What in the senior bowl? What do I have to do to be in shape? They asked a lot of different questions. They weren't full of energy. My last phone call, the guy said, I'm on the next plane. Just get me there. I love football. I'm ready to play. It's my passion. It's the only thing that I want to do. Just tell me what to do. Well, I looked up who that was. He ran a 4 5 40. He was the fast one from East Central Oklahoma, which was a small school. So that's why it was a little bit of hesitancy. And uh, I called my boss and said, that's who we need to take. We took him. He became the MVP on the defensive side um, in the senior bowl. And uh, he was then our second round draft pick. Marty Lyons was the first round that year in 1979. So that was two parts of the sack exchange. And went on to being a six-time pro bowler and held the sack record for many, many years. Wow, that is really cool. What happened with the, the sack record? Who broke that sack well, record? Michael Strahan of the Giants, our enemy, <laughs> broke it, but on a false thing when, when uh, Brett Favre took a dive to break the record. Oh, we remember the dive. <laughs> we remember the dive. Okay, so uh, well, you've had a, an amazing an amazing story, you know, coming up in that era, uh, being the first female to really 
to really make your way into a, an all male dominated sport and, and to do you know what you did as far as the scouting it, what i think is awesome is that you've compiled all of that into your book tell me a little bit about the book yeah, I was very fortunate. A young lady saw my website, which is uh, my son made for me, called Connie Scouts. And uh, she approached me about, she said, I'd love to do the story. And uh, four years later, this book, X's and O's Don't Mean I Love You, it's a story of my life since age 12, all the way through all the experiences with the Jets, uh, many male mentors that were so terrific to me and got me into football and understanding the game of football more than just the basics. And then also with Gastineau, with all the little stories of different people that I think whether or not um, you're a Jet fan, it's a positive book, it's um, about football, but it's also just uh, some great stories about life. Very good. Yeah, you definitely don't have to be a Jets fan to no. appreciate this. There's a lot of history here, yes, uh, which is really fun. It's really fun. So, well, very good. Uh, if somebody wanted to learn more about you, is it the so so connyscouts.com is that correct yes, they Connie, can go yeah. there for more information connyscouts.com as i'm on twitter um, um and that's my website connie scouts yes very good i've known connie for a number of years now she's a wonderful woman we both have a lot to be thankful for she knows my family i know your family uh we both have a lot to be thankful for today being thanksgiving so connie thank you for joining me and Creek residents, we wish you well on Thanksgiving. Enjoy your time with your families. This has been another Creek Talk.